In three, in three, two, two, improv. In three improv. two, one, we are back with another episode. How you all doing? Hope you're doing well. You know, like, follow, subscribe. Let's get that out of the way first and foremost. You got things on your mind. Aces. My friend Aces. Aces is your friend. I don't know. I've never heard of this person. Who is this person? It's not a person. Right. I'm feeling Aces. You're feeling Aces. The sun is out. Ah. And it is a perfect time to discuss something that's on my mind. Yes. Okay. Which is? Sun-soaked, sweat-drenched, <laughs> glamour-rich snapshot of California South Bay in the 80s. Uh, a... <laughs> okay. okay, so listen, just to cut it short a little bit, you can continue in a second. I don't, but okay. he wants to talk about what he considers a hidden gem of a movie from the 80s. Correct. Which is called? Tequila Sunrise. Now, why do you love this film so much? All sorts of reasons, a confluence of very, very rich factors. Yes. It's a tapestry of good writing, great acting, yeah. outstanding cinematography for which it was nominated at the Academy very Awards. Good. Very Mr. good. Mr. Conrad Hall, very good. by the way. A great musical score by Dave Grusin. There's a bit of an audience there. Have you guys seen Tequila Sunrise, the movie? No. Watch it. It's a good drink, though. It is. I'm going to come <laughs> on to that. <laughs> I'm gonna come on to Anyway, that. there's a movie from 1988. Eight. 88, starring Mel Gibson and Michelle Pfeiffer, Kurt and, Russell, and JT Kurt Russell. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, very good. You know, waiting okay. for the timing. That's great. So, sorry. So, yes. so, I remember I saw this film maybe 10 years ago. All right. 10 years ago. Lucky and you. I remember I don't, I'm not as big a fan as you, and I'll tell you for why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seemed very convoluted to me. I didn't know what the plot was. Was it a crime thriller? Was it a love story? Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the plot? Written and directed by Robert Town, mm. the great Robert Town, who actually passed away this yes. month. Yes. Okay. Who wrote a great number of films, including he has writing credits on The Godfather, okay. Chinatown. Okay. Many, many others. Yes. Okay. And another hidden gem. Yes. Days of Thunder, by the way. Classic. Which he wrote two years after that. Yeah. All right. Tequila Sunrise is the story of two friends, mm -mm 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 childhood friends, mm -mm 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 separated. Yes right by the law one a heart of gold filled uh, ex drug dealer yeah and one a morally ambiguous police detective right best friends at childhood mm -hmm. okay one went to jail a mexican prison the other went to law enforcement and their worlds collide now in their early 30s okay 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 all set in so California guys, South Bay around Manhattan Beach and Redonda Beach. Two guys okay. on opposite sides of the law. Mel Gibson, the drug dealer. Kurt Russell, the police detective. Best friends. Best friends. But on conflicting professions. Yes, exactly right. Okay. Very good. And what further complicates and divides them ah. is the... How do I say this? Uh, say something. Hot tempered okay. uh, say something. love and attraction yes. for Michelle Pfeiffer. So opposite sides of the law, opposite sides of a woman. Well, yes. it, to some extent, yes. All right. Okay. 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 Now, why is this film such a hidden gem for you? I know you kind of gave us a little tidbit, but expand on that. Well, I think first of all, right, it is very, very subtly written, very well written. Very rich in dialogue. A bit okay. too rich in dialogue, if you ask me. Oh, you think so? I think so? that's one of its problems. I think the best thing about this film, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong, it's not like the worst film in the world. But from what I see, yes, and what I remember, and what really grabbed me is the poster. The poster is the best part of this film. Interesting. What do you remember <laughs> about the poster? I just remember it was like cool and slick and, you know, kind of like, it was quite enticing and made me want to watch the film. And when I did watch the film, I'm like, what the hell is going on? They're talking way too much. There's not enough shooting. How about, how about somebody shoot somebody? Okay, so what you're saying, first of all, I remember the poster. Yes. It had the hues of the tequila sunrise drink. Do you remember it? Correct. Red Correct. and yellow. That's what I'm saying. It's a very cool poster. I must confess, when I was at the legal age of drinking, yes. having watched the film a number of times yes. to that point, right? <laughs> I used to go to nightclubs with my fake ID and order yeah. a tequila sunrise. The drink was disgusting. Okay. I did okay. it many a time. By the way, Abu Jamie's back. Oh yeah. Thank Give you. us a wave. Give a wave yeah, thank, to the audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you yes, Abu Jamie. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Anyways, so um, now, I, do, I must admit that it's a cool sounding title. It's very cool. It's a cool sounding title. I'll give you that. Sunrise. Good title, good poster. And I must say... And good actors. And good actors. Now, Mel Gibson, this movie 
was bookended by Lethal Weapon 1 and Lethal Weapon 2. Right. right? It was filmed so right in between peak. the two. At his peak, the hair, the flowing locks, the tan, by the way, a great, great tan. And I've got to say I one say, thing. Not a quite great tango. Tan. Aside from all of these, but, all of these important factors, <laughs> something that's less important than the tan is his acting, which is very good. Oh, very thank you for that note. Go on, well, yeah. You didn't do it. He did it. Okay. Anyway, as a thespian myself, I must applaud his acting chops in this film. Okay, well, we'll come on to that, even though you're not a massive fan of the film. Okay, so um, he's he's got three Mad Maxes in his rear view. His star is ascending. There is, oh, oh. excuse me, thank you very much. Thank you, Abu Jamie. It's very important, thank you. All right, continue. New balls, please. Continue. Anyways, and Kurt Russell. Don't you dare say anything about the Irishman. Go on, <laughs> <laughs> Go on yes, Kurt Russell. That's Kurt Russell, okay. <laughs> Also, fresh from Overboard, yes. a classic, by the way, Very starring good. his wife Goldie Hawn. Yeah. And Bird on a Wire. That's Mel Gibson, bro. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Goldie Hawn's in Bird on a Wire, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And about to do Tango and Cash. By the way, by the yes. way, was there much competition? I mean, since you know about these things, yeah, go on. between Gibson and Russell, I because they were sort of the same type of character, same sort of actor, same age, same look. If you, you mean will. you're talking about uh, like the cocky monetization? Like, no, just in terms of like the stereotypization. I see. No, I don't think. I mean, listen. I mean, they were competing actors, right? They were both probably vying for a lot of the same roles. I think. Well, I think Gibson was always the bigger star, number one. Sure, sure. I think Gibson sure. was the more acclaimed. And serious, fraud. yes. And I, more yeah. of a serious actor. And I, and I, I think mean, he did Hamlet and all of these correct. films. Nothing like Kurt Russell did. Although I Kurt Russell say, did Big Trouble in Little China, by the way, 10 times better than Hamlet, better written than Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> a Tango and Cash is actually almost a rip-off of the Lethal Weapon series. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Anyway, we're going off on a tangent. Get back to Tequila Sunrise. Anyway, so you've got these two male stars yeah. in their pomp, in their prime. Kurt Russell's look, by the way, something, something to try and emulate, I must say. Do you the remember the look? Back. The, the slick back, back look, modelled, by the way, on legendary NBA coach Pat Riley. And then coach Gordon Barry Gecko. Lakers. I don't know if it was modelled. Well, Gordon Gecko is modelled on Pat Riley as well, oh. which is an important, important footnote. Write that down, by the way. I'm writing it. I'm writing it. Michael Douglas modelled his look on Pat Riley, mm. and mm. and uh, in in Wall Street, and Kurt Russell modelled his look uh, his, of Nick Frischer, the police detective he plays. Oh, but Jamie had the audio level on Pat Riley. <laughs> Good. He's giving Stop a interrupting me. Anyway, we need to get a studio, bro. It's getting too loud I in got the clubs. it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So Pat Riley, a massive inspiration for these. Uh, these Pat actors. Riley is the legendary coach of the then LA Lakers. Subsequently, he Did would you coach. Did you say that or not? Yes. The, oh, the New York sorry. Knicks and the sorry, Miami Heat. Sorry, I apologize. Heat. And he's now president of operations of the Miami Heat. Very good. Do some more note taking. Sorry, sorry. Anyways, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Michelle Pfeiffer as well. Yes. Right. The archetypal. 80s sex symbol. siren right yeah yeah um fresh off greece 2 one of your favorite movies if i'm I not mistaken it. let's bowl, married let's to the mob yes a great comedy very into good. the night another great comedy yes and soon to do the fabulous baker boys a great comedy no not really but a great movie nonetheless <laughs> with the brothers bridges the brothers okay, bridges right who presents the perfect foil for these two macho masculine men on opposite sides of the law who are vying for the attention of the same woman. Right. And a very, very, very interesting paradoxical twist is that the guy playing the criminal, Mel Gibson, is actually the softer of the two characters, right? The nicer of the two, right? He's I like. In, I you like, like that, that, yeah? I like Whereas that, the I like cop that. is willing to bend the law, manipulate people, and this is also um, referenced to some extent um, with you know the way they dress him up slick suits crisp white shirts ties rolex they just juxtaposed against mel gibson's character who plays the more relaxed droopy shirt made of liar cell if i'm not yes, mistaken very much surf. like very much he like myself surf. he does like well he likes to watch surfing contests his son his son well done good thank knowledge you. i do know this movie yes, thank you. okay anyways very well done yeah right um, by the way, I have to say, I just got to go back to the tanning. Yeah. Kurt Russell's tan. I mean, they're both very well tanned. Right. Yeah. I'm wondering right. if they were just sunning it 
yes. on Manhattan Beach yeah. or if they were topping up in the sunbed. But I right. got, I must, I must, I got to believe Kurt right. Russell right. was always also using the Hawaiian Tropic oil on top. So we should watch shiny. This, we should watch this film for the tans alone. To some extent, and ultimately, you only judge a film on tans. Not only, oh, okay. but it's a very, very, very important. Um, what do you call it? Um, subplot. Subplot. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> very right. good. Very good. Okay. Also, good watch game. I got to say, very good watch game. I just got to make a, uh, okay, a, a go nod. On. Go on. Okay. What is the watch game? Gold Submariner, sported by Mel Gibson. Right. And the uh, Two Tone Day Just, sported by Kurt Russell. Okay. And there's a very interesting. Uh, there's well, a very that was the interesting... height of the 80s, wasn't it? So everybody exactly, had a Rolex. Yeah. yeah. Not me. But, uh, but there was a there was a very interesting uh, what you call it bit of dialogue when. Um, tensions are flaring, jealousy is rife because Kurt Russell is making headway with Michelle Pfeiffer and Mel Gibson is forlorn getting drunk on Tequila Sunrise, by the way. You may, you want to interrupt? I have a question. Oh, you may. Yes, go ahead. If this film is so great, yes. from your point of view, yes. why did it not do very well, do you think? Because it, I don't think it was highly acclaimed. It actually was a box office hit. Made about a hundred million All right, office. I'm gonna stay out of the rest of this. Podcast. You may as well. Okay, fine. You fine. may as well. But uh, you know what I think. You know what I think. But it's is not that, like an '80s classic. I'll tell you why. Why? I'll tell you That's why. That's what I'm asking. Because, because exactly as you're saying, Mel Gibson's other films, other hits during that decade overshadowed. Had, overshadowed it, and I said it was bookended by Lethal Weapon One. Yes. And Lethal Weapon Two. Sure. Okay, the two best still, entries in that series. You think you have the biggest stars from the '80s? Yeah. Russell. Pfeiffer, Gibson, Raul Julia, Raul Julia. Do you know what I mean? J.T. Walsh wearing Rolexes and having great tans. Yes. Okay, great. so I mean, sure, it was a box office hit, box office hit, but like nobody like refers to it. It's not remembered. It's not a, considered a classic. I think you knocked the nail on the head initially. Why? A lot of dialogue. It's a thinking man's thriller. Ah. Right. It's not right. really an action film. No. It's not really a police thriller but think, in the classic sense. You think the plot being, you know, the narc, narcotic agent, the drug dealer, the like, you know, femme fatale, you'd think there would be a lot of action. I get what you're saying. And when you watch the trailer, by the way, yes. boy, is that a good trailer. Is it? Oh my God. Good voiceover work as well. Okay. I gotta say. Go on. Right? So it's a fantastic trailer, and I think Any it's probably sold. Yeah. Renditions. Of no, the but I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna. In a uh, world. Do, yeah, yeah. Do you want? Do you want me to? Uh, do you want me to freestyle? It? Sure. <laughs> Give me some mood music. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> this holiday season, <laughs> Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell collide. <laughs> In <laughs> drinking tequila sunrise, wearing Rolexes, and lusting after the same woman. Michelle Pfeiffer, Raul Julia, JT Walsh at cinemas every day, Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Not so much a trend, that's a TV spot. That's what they call a TV oh, spot. That's amazing. Right? You I like love that? It. Okay. I love it. I All right. It. Okay. First of all, where was I? So I was asking why did it, why is it not considered a classic? Very rich in dialogue. Okay. Which is why I think now. Too much talking, not enough happening. I think lots of happening. You have to, you have to read the tea leaves. Okay. okay. All right. So I think it's part love story, part policier, part action film, but not defined by any one and element. therein lies the problem. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. But actually it has gained subsequently cult status today. Okay. It's actually a much beloved film. Abu Jamie, have you watched it? Yeah. yeah. No, no. You like it? He loves it. Huh? He, he loves, loves it. it. Okay. Right, fine. Okay. So. I also want to say a couple of a couple of amazing, amazing um, romance scenes. Okay. Okay. Oh no no no! Yeah yeah yeah! Can, can I just stop you? You go ahead. Yes, There's please, nothing please. I dislike more than an elongated like sex scene. Like especially which were quite prevalent in these 80s films. All right. Like the steamy shower scene where there they're is sucking one. each other's faces for like five minutes. I don't need it. Yeah. It adds nothing. Yeah. What does it add? It's not a full blown, blown porno, is it? It's titillating. No. no, it's titillating to whom? Well, I don't know. You know, some red blooded males and well, females. I guess, actually, now that I'm, you know, just to like argue against myself, I guess in a time before the internet and before, you know, ubiquitous porn, maybe that's all people got or had. Whatever. You I, don't know, I, don't know I, don't know, I don't know what he's talking about. But, but do you want to know? We can, we can talk about these things in a very mature way. We don't need to, like, you know. 
Okay, uh, I would like to point out, since you mentioned the love scene, the sex yes, scene, yes, yes, which does take yes, place yes, in a hot tub, yes, okay, hot an tub. interesting footnote yes. is that since the, um, since the hot tub or the shower was not properly um, chlorinated, yeah. Mel Gibson and uh, what's it called, Michelle Pfeiffer were covered with skin rashes thereafter. Right. Just an interesting footnote. Thank you. You, might want to, you should have wrote, written that down. No, no, no. no. I'll, okay, send I, them, I, I'll send them a message uh, you, you, with an update you're, on you're, their you're, uh, condition. Yeah, okay. I think they've recovered since then. But, anyways, okay. nevertheless. Yes. All right. So, um, but it's not really that the sex scene that I'm talking about. Yes. There are two extremely, extremely powerful scenes okay, between. Actually, there's more than that. There are two extremely powerful scenes between Mel Gibson and Michelle Pfeiffer and between Kurt Russell and Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay? that are I mean credit to Robert Town for writing them and for directing them and credit to the actors for performing them okay the first scene okay is between Kurt Russell and Michelle Pfeiffer when he's trying to woo her and he's doing it for let's say not strictly speaking the most honorable reasons because he's trying to gauge trying to extract information from her okay and they're having this um, they're having this sort of tete-a-tete -tete in the restaurant and the chapstick line exactly exactly it's she a says, good line uh, you, you like that line it's well written listen are you wearing chapstick or lip gloss because your teeth get uh, your lips keep getting, getting stuck, stuck on your teeth. teeth or is that your idea of a smile yeah 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 very and, good and she catches listen, him off guard there's no doubt that it's a very well written film I mean they they speak in a very casual humanistic natural way you know it's not it's not movie dialogue. It's yeah. very natural dialogue. Correct. And very witty Correct. dialogue at the same Correct. time. So, yes, maybe even... Sorry, it's getting loud again, guys. Apologies. Maybe the dialogue is even greater than the actual direction. Perhaps. You know? Well, there is that scene. Yeah, there's also, that's, that's what I found. Anyway. There's also the scene. Yeah. And for anybody looking for romance tips... Yeah. The scene when Met Michelle Pfeiffer and Mel Gibson finally, finally consummate their love. Mm. I mean, the look that he gives her, right? Yes, and the dialogue that he drops. Go on then. Okay. So he's, she's basically questioning him. It's three quarters of the way through the film when they're finally having their moment, right? And she's questioning him about why he's gone into this life of drugs. And he's basically saying, look, I had no choice. Nobody wants me to quit. I have this ex-wife who's greedy. I have ex-partners who don't want me to quit. The police don't want me to quit. There are informants who don't want me to quit. My cousin, who's basically a freeloader, doesn't want me to quit. Nobody wants me to quit. So being a rubber hose salesman ain't cutting it, which is the path he has tried, chosen, yeah. chosen you know, to go straight. now. Right? Yeah, to go straight. And then she says, that's completely paranoid, and so on and so forth. And then he gets a little bit sensitive and upset. He's like, well, you know, I might be paranoid here, but nobody wants me to quit. He gets up, he's motioning to leave. And she, she, she brings him down. She's like, no, no, I didn't mean to hurt you. And then he says, oh, that's all right. Just looking at you hurts more. How many times have you used that line? I would wish there was a woman now I could start How many times with. have you used that line? I use it many a time, I'm but sure unfortunately I didn't have Mel Gibson's uh, pizzazz. Or tan. Or tan. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Fine. Great, so listen, great acting, great dialogue. Great, just powerful, absolutely. powerful great stuff. Great acting, great dialogue. Okay. Okay. Cinematography. Good. I also want to say something else. Not just great good dialogue. Something that I think is overlooked t today so okay. much in, okay. is... Okay. I was so happy, I'm so happy now to watch it back retrospectively, that a film casts the right looking people in the right type of roles. What do you mean? Well, as in like, you want somebody who's, I mean, today they try and go off key, you know, casting people in TV shows and films, they want somebody not too like, uh, which were obviously sexy or yes. obviously good yes. looking, which I am opposed to by the way, yes. right? And I think this film is so perfectly cast because Mel Gibson was the star of the yeah. time. You know, a 31, 32 year old, great looking guy, right? Can play the everyman. Yes. But, you know, it's tough and attractive and with steely blue eyes, yes. right? Michelle Pfeiffer was the archetypal 
beautiful, Fine. classy, Fine. blonde of the 80s, yes, right? Yes. And Kurt Russell was excellent as the fast talking, you know, freewheeling, slick, cracking. wise cracking, just great casting. Yeah. Raul Julia, who, by the way, the late great Raul Julia, one of the great bombastic actors of the 80s and 90s, he's incredible in this, playing the duplicitous. I mean, I'm going to give some some Go ahead. Know, pl plot lines away. I mean, he's it's playing like 30 years old. This film. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. He's basically plays the drug dealer, but yeah. he's also playing a Mexican agent at the same time. And he's, you know, anyways, he's, you know, like like arch criminals do. Again, like, there's too many. Again, one oh, thing for me, there's too many of these double crosses, and this guy's playing that guy, and that. It's like you almost get lost in it. I disagree, and to quote him, because probably because you're smarter. You and I, you and I are friends, right? Let me quote a friend because this is a movie about friendship. Yeah. This is actually a movie about. This yeah. is actually a great movie. Yes. It's, it's a love story, but it's exactly. a movie about great friendships. Exactly. The Kurt Russell and people are inclusive of each other. One hundred percent. And you know, include people. In <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just, I'm just, right, just segue for me to go say on, this go line. On, go on. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Friendship is the only choice you can life, choice, the choice in life. You can make that yours. You can't pick your family. I have to face that. No man should be judged by whatever direction his dick goes. That's like blaming a compass for pointing north, for Christ's sake. Friendship is all we have. It's a very good How point. How can you fuck it up? Okay, that's very. Can you make point. us look so bad? Okay, okay. All right. So listen. Now that we freaked everybody out in the. Park, I haven't seen an uh, Matador hold his ground like that since the <laughs> Rosa. Okay. All right. So another line about you know. So bottom he loves, line, he loves, he loves you're the, asking our audience to give Tequila Sunrise a chance. Watch it, and you watched it recently, I'm sure, and you it still stands the test of time. Would you? I say? absolutely think it stands the test. It hasn't of time. dated in any way. I don't think so. I mean, I think that's another thing that. You know why cult follow? Why do cult followings take place, right? Cult following I effectively is what happens when a film, you know, picks up steam or many years after. Hundred percent. It's like context. Absolutely right. Yeah. And a lot of that might be rooted in the fact that this film could be made today. It could okay. be made at any time. Okay. Maybe it went under the radar sure. when it got released because of an influx or an overload, a plethora of other films coming yeah. out at the same time. You know, more. I won't say glitzier, but more. I don't know. Fast-paced, high testosterone films. Even the Gibson, Russell, and Pfeiffer were making, right? But, but, you know, now you can watch it with the benefit of hindsight. This story could be adapted today as a remake or adapted into a uh, TV version of itself. They probably miscast it as they always do. Incidentally, have you seen the TV version of Presumed Innocent? No. A great film made about two years later, starring yes. Harrison Ford, and yes, yes, Greta yes. Skaki, and these, and Raul Julia, by yes. the way, and they remade it now yeah. as like a six-part with Jake Gyllenhaal. With Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. and I loved the film. Yes, I and loved the film, and it's just the problem is, it it's not as intense. I don't think it's cast as well, um, and it falls flat. Is it a bit politically correct? What's the problem? I don't know. I mean, I I, I need to think about that, but. What I'm trying to say is the original, which is based on Scott Turow's novel, was uh, an, uh, was one of the highest grossing movies of 1990, and so well played and so suspenseful and sexually charged and exciting and so on and so forth. I just watched the uh, I just watched the TV version. It's okay, maybe maybe for you know younger, more contemporary audiences who haven't yeah. seen the movie, yeah. it'll play better. Yeah. But disappointing. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, I don't know if they'll remake Tequila Sunrise, yeah. but um, I would tell uh, our subscribers <laughs> yeah, go on. and anyone out there, definitely, definitely give it a watch, a rewatch. Give it a watch. Many a watch. Yes. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. Tell us what you think about it, if you have any comments. If you'd like us to review another film, please tell us. Weekend at Bernie's 2. Sure. I watched that recently. And? Classic. Is it? Classic. What happens in Weekends at Bernie's 2? I don't even remember. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give out any spoilers, okay? But yeah. trust me, it's coming. Okay, cool. Alright. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh no, but um Oh, yes, sorry, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Abu Jamie, thank you. Kind of you. Very good. Very good. Dos 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 cuatro dos siete. Do you know what that is? No. That's the um, that's the code that um, Mel Gibson speaks into the payphone in order to get through 
to his drug dealer friend. Fine. Those, 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 quattro, those, yeah. And he's wearing exceptional light blue. You haven't Hawaiian talked about shirt. the hair dyes, but oh, oh no, 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 no! Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. I would like to say there's not particularly strong spec. Um, well, let me guess. Sunglass game, but, 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 hair dye not prominent here because okay. they were in their early thirties. They weren't resorting to that. Fine. But hair color, Michelle Pfeiffer. Dirty blonde. I mean, dirty blonde. Yes. Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell rocking the standard chestnut. Fine. Raul Kurt, Julia yeah. rocking the <laughs> the jet your, black. Your, your, your much maligned suit. The suit. All right? The suit. And JT Walsh, I think, rocking the um, also the chestnut. Oh, and by the way, just one more thing. JT Walsh, just we mentioned him briefly. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Few good men. Oh my god. By the way, what an amazing filmography. Yes. Amazing filmography. Outbreak. A few good men, and incidentally, one of the great, great villainous performances, opposite Kurt Russell in Breakdown. We should do yes. Do you remember? We should do a video about these actors who are not A-list, but are literally in like fifty films that you love. Good shout! But they're not like the main character. Good shout! We'll do that. Good shout! Anyway, thank you. Love you. See you soon. Don't forget to say your final, final words. Usually, like. I'll leave it to you. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. <laughs> and stay prayed up.